Hey guys, it's Derek. Um, today I'm going to be making some uh, fermented pickles. Um, these are a little bit different than the vinegar pickles that you'd see at the store. Um, you can find some fermented pickles uh, some places now, but it's largely something that uh, you can do at home, and it's honestly not very hard. So um, I've liked the vinegar pickles for a long time. Uh, grew up eating them and everything. Um, but here, last year or two, uh, gotten to where I like the uh, the fermented pickles a little bit better. Um, for those of you that haven't really tried to ferment before, uh, it's something I recommend uh, to start with. Uh, there's a lot of people that do sauerkraut as well, um, but the vinegar pickles, it's, it's a lot uh, shorter fermentation time. Um, it's usually about a week to two weeks, uh, depending on uh, what you're working with. Um, so you get a little bit quicker results, and uh, but it's just as easy to do. So I'm going to move the camera around, and we can get started. So to do a, a very, very basic pickle, um, all you need is uh, some pickles. I got these from, uh, it was either Sam's Club or Costco, I can't remember which, but you can find these size pickles just about, or cucumbers, just about anywhere. Um, you also need salt. Um, I'm going to be using kosher salt, um, but any non-iodized salt uh, will work. The iodine in the, the iodized salt, or table salt usually has iodine in it, um, will kill off the, the bacteria that you're wanting uh, to turn your pickles into cucumbers, so you want to watch out for that. Um, and then beyond that, um, you just need a container to, to ferment them in. I like using a half gallon uh, canning jars or ball jars, uh, mason jars, whatever they're called in your area they work really well. Um, and some distilled uh, or non-chlorinated water. Um, and the, the non-chlorinated is kind of the same as the iodine um, as it'll it'll kill off all your bacteria and you don't want that to happen. So what you want to do to prep your pickles, um, unless you have well water, uh, don't wash them off because the, the bacteria that you want to ferment the pickles um, is already on the pickles. It's the it's a lactobacillus um, strain of bacteria. Um, but if you wash if you wash them off with chlorinated or tap water, um, it'll kill them off and nothing will happen, or it'll take a lot longer for them to ferment. Um, so what you want to do is um, remove the stem and the tip. And you don't really want to take a lot off of either one. Um, you just want to get that off. Um, if you don't do that, it, in my experience, it kind of gives them a little bit more of a bitter taste. Um, and you may like that. You may want to try a small batch with it just to see um, if you care or not. But uh, for the most part, um, it's I, I prefer them without the stem. Um, but yeah, just gotta go through, and you want to make sure um, the fresher the produce you get, um, the better this works, because it's uh, spent more time out in the field, and it'll probably have a, a bigger concentration of the bacteria you want on it. So now I've got all these uh, topped and tailed. Took the stem and the the tail end off, or the blossom end off. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them in the jar. Um, like I said, I like using half gallon jars um, because I can get my hand down in them and it's easier to position stuff. Um, I like putting my stuff up on end because I get uh, get more in the jar, um, whereas if you just threw it in, um, you'd have a lot of gaps and spaces and um, you wouldn't wouldn't be able to uh, get as many in the jar. Um, as far as packing them in, you don't have to, um, but you can. It doesn't really hurt things. Um, you might end up with with cucumbers. Um, if you pickle them and you, you kind of mash them in there, you might end up with little softer pickles. Um, but if that doesn't bother you, you can go right ahead and do however you want. 
So as you can see, I have uh, pretty much all the pickles that I cut up um, in the jar. Um, there are about five left over um, that I couldn't quite get in there, um, and you can just use those for a snack or whatever. Um, and if you just want to do regular pickles, um, then all you have to do is add the brine and um, cover it up like I'll show you how to do in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but I like to add a few other things like some spices and seasonings and all that. Um, if you have a specific kind of pickle that you like, um, you know, go to the store or look at the ingredients list um, and it'll give you a pretty good idea of what you want to add to get that type of pickle. Because um, the f fermented or, or vinegar pickles, um, if you add the other seasonings, you'll come up with something very, very similar um, in flavor. So, um, what I've been doing lately is I will add some garlic and I just um, I peel it and then I'll uh, crush it. So, like you can see, that used to be a whole clove and then I squashed it. Um, so, this time around, I'm going to add four to it. Um, if you like more garlic, you can add more garlic. If you don't like garlic, you don't have to add it at all. It doesn't matter. Um, another thing I like to use are uh, bay leaves. And um, bay leaves will help keep, uh, keep the pickles uh, crisp. Um, you can also use grape leaves, um, anything. I think oak leaves work too. Um, you want something that's high in tannins. Um, because the tannins will um, keep the pickle held together a little better, and uh, it'll it'll you'll end up with a crisper pickle. Um, I've got dried right now, but you can use fresh. Either works. Um, I'm gonna put two or three in. We'll go with three just because. Um, it doesn't have to be crushed up. It doesn't have to be whole. Um, just as long as you have some in there. Um, <clears throat> in addition, I'm going to be using some uh, black peppercorns. Um, I use whole black peppercorns. Um, it's a little easier to gauge uh, flavor, uh, or the pepper flavor, if they're whole. I've tried it with ground before and they came out just uh, a little too peppery for my liking. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon of those. And then uh, normally I'd add some uh, some dill or or something like that, but I don't have any at the moment. Uh, it's been a while since I've been shopping for spices, so I'm going to add a teaspoon of pickling spice. Um, and as far as this stuff goes, um, you can gauge. You know, you you can do trial and error with this. Um, Fermentation usually takes a week to two weeks. Um, usually depends on temperature. Um, the warmer it, is, warmer it is, the faster the fermentation is going to go. Uh, usually, as far as that goes, like all the other the extra stuff, you don't necessarily need it. Um, I would recommend adding the bay leaves just um, just to get a crisper pickle. Um, that it, it's a lot more similar to the store bought pickles um, as far as their their texture and their crunchiness. So for um, doing pickles, or like pickled cucumbers at least, um, they recommend you have anywhere between a 3.5 and 5% uh, brine, and that would be, you know, 5% salt to 100% um, water. Um, I usually usually go along the 5% because it's, it's easier to do the math. So I have a 500 ml of distilled water, and to that I'm going to add 25 grams of um, of salt. Um, I like using uh, you know metric units of measure um, when I'm doing this because it's it's easier to convert and it's easier to to work with um, than the the imperial system. Um, there's a few different ways you can go about um, covering this, and you you do want to cover it because um, if not the you know, you could, your stuff might start to mold, or you might get um, some other microbes in there that that uh, will affect your fermentation. So, um, with with uh, the glass jars, at least, um, you definitely want to use the the ring that comes with them. Um, 
you can do a couple paper towels, you could do a coffee filter, um, you could do, you know, a, a cloth, uh, cloth towel or a, a cloth rag. You want something porous, um, so that way if there's not enough bacteria on your cucumbers, um, you can get a little bit from the air. Um, but you don't want it to be completely open because then everything will get through um, and your stuff will start to rot. Um, one thing that I've started using and I like quite a bit are the, uh, they're called pickle pipes from Mason Tops. Um, they're silicone and you can send them through the dishwasher. Um, they're really easy to clean and they have a little bit of an airlock up at the top of their um, the lid because it, it'll sit on here like that. If this for whatever reason builds up a lot of gas because um, the microbes will be um, be producing gas. Um, this will let the gas go but it won't let anything else in. Um, since I got these yesterday um, I'm not too worried about there being enough uh, bacteria on it or in them so I'm just gonna do it this way. Um, so with the mason tops all you have to do is put it on here and screw down the lid. And then uh, you want to put it in a place that's warm but not in direct sunlight um, because sunlight has uh, the UV rays and the UV rays will kill off your bacteria um, to a certain degree and it'll take a lot longer to ferment. Um, but yeah, beyond that, that's about it. Um, another little piece of you know, fermentation equipment, it's kind of optional, um, is a weight. Um, I have these in here pretty good. So I don't think they're going to float to the top because you want all your food, um, all the stuff you're trying to ferment underneath. Um, you might see some of the spices and stuff floating to the top. They'll eventually sink, so that's not a big deal. They just need to, to take on a little bit of water. But you, you especially don't want what you're trying to ferment to go to the top because it'll, it'll start to spoil really, really quickly. Um, so some people use a weight. Um, Mason Tops makes a little, um, I think they're glass weights. Um, I haven't tried them. I've never really seen the need for one. Um, if you really want to try it and you don't want to try the, the, uh, the glass weights from Mason Tops, you can use another jar and put it in the top and then put the cloth over it um, so it's, it holds everything down that way. Um, I know some people use like a cabbage leaf or a lettuce leaf or whatever um, to keep everything underneath. Um, I don't like that method as much because if the leaf floats up above the the brine um, then you're you're gonna contaminate your uh, your ferment and it's it's it more more than likely is gonna go bad um, but yeah so that's pretty much it and um, yeah it takes a week to two weeks normally um, for for cucumbers um, and what you want to do is right towards the end of that week, that first week, um, open this up, pull, pull one out and try it. Um, make sure it smells all right. You know, it shouldn't have a, it shouldn't have a funky smell. Um, there shouldn't really be much of anything growing on the, the water line. Um, occasionally you'll get something called calm yeast and that's not as big a deal, but if you have anything other than that, um, you usually, usually can't do much about it. Um, but yeah, take them out after a week, try them. Um, if they don't taste pickly enough to you, um, you can throw them back in. Um, you're, you can leave, leave the rest of them in and uh, let them go another week or another few days. Uh, you kind of want to gauge that for yourself because everybody's tastes are different. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how I do um, fermented pickles. I hope you liked what you saw. Um, if you have any questions or anything that you'd want me to try, um, just uh, leave a comment, and I will see you guys another time.